two big problems with the wheel options strategy. It's actually a big part of what I do, slight variation because I like to trade the covered strangle and there's a specific reason for that. It actually helps address some of these problems. But I wanna walk you through what these two problems are, why you should care about them, and then how we can overcome them. Because I actually think the wheel or the covered strangle are two fantastic strategies for just about all traders, especially newer traders, but some of these get in the way and they give people a bad experience because they're not really thinking through the strategies in their entirety. What's up everybody, Eric here. Welcome back to all the outliers. Let's start talking about the wheel. Okay, the very first problem. I am comfortable getting assigned at X. X meaning a price on a specific stock. I literally cannot tell you how often I have heard this sentiment. We have something that's trading along just like this that you see here, and they're making this statement when things look like this, meaning they look good. The underlying is going generally where we want it to. There's good earnings supporting it. Everything seems good. So for most people, they come up with this just insane mental gymnastic where, oh, if it's trading at 180 up here, I would love to have it at 160. It's a bargain. The problem with that sentiment is this. When it's trading down at 160 or whatever the case is, there's typically a reason. And that reason, more often than not, will make you uncomfortable with getting assigned at that point in time. So this is looking at Apple, one of the largest market cap stocks in existence, literally a trillion dollars, big company, everybody thinks too big to fail. And let's take a look. If you had top ticked it, meaning not even getting it at the very top, but like it up here when it was trading very strong, you would have bought in at around 179, 180. As of the close of today, which is the 20th of December, it is trading at 132. This is a 26% decline in the product. Now, to be abundantly clear, I actually still like Apple. I think long-term it's probably okay, but there's a huge problem with this. Let's say you were okay getting assigned at whatever your short strike was. Let's say if it was trading at 179, you got in at 170 being very gracious with the pricing. The problem is, is your basis is now 170. It's trading down at 132. It's very difficult to maintain spot price sensitivity in this style trade. And this is one of the reasons why I like the covered strangle so much, because one of the primary differences between these two strategies is with the wheel, you sell your cash secured puts until you're assigned and then you sell covered calls. With the covered strangle, I do slightly different accounting where I don't use all of my money on the initial trade. So I sell cash secured puts and then I'm assigned long stock. Once I'm assigned long stock, I sell additional cash secured puts. Granted, I still like the product while I'm selling uncovered calls against it. So slight different way that I like to run those. I'll throw a link to how I trade them in the video description down below. But the point I'm making here is more often than not, we're comfortable until we're uncomfortable. Most traders fail to truly materialize in their mind what is the case that is going to lead them to being assigned because most of the time they think it's something like this, where we're just getting this nice little dip. Oh, I'll buy it at a discount on a small pullback and then we'll just run up and out and I'll have this great basis and life will be peachy. That's the ideal scenario. Unfortunately, the stock market has a very nifty way of screwing us all over simultaneously somehow saying it is a joke, but everybody feels like that. Um, so if you think you're comfortable getting assigned at X, that's fine. The way that I would really quantify that is saying, okay, if it's trading at 179, we sell our 170 cash secured put. Now it's trading at 170. And you're like, okay, it's trading right around my strike. I don't mind. And then it goes to 168, then 165, 160, 155, 150, all the way down to 132. The way that I make sure that I am comfortable with getting assigned is I don't just leave the my management plan as get assigned, sell covered calls. 
I make sure that there is some sort of protocol to manage the basis. So for me, I trade the covered strangles, but if you chose not to, and you just wanted to trade the wheel, maybe you set up a floor that you'll take the trade to. Because again, we have to acknowledge the fact that if we're selling puts below the basis, we get a sign on those puts, something changed. Ideally, it's not a big, hopefully it's not a big deal, but it might be. So we need to have some sort of floor in place. So again, rounding out this example, we sold those 170 puts. Let's say we give it uh, a five to 10% movement range against our entry. And then if it falls through that, that's where we have a sell stop order to get the fuck out, move on. And now we can be comfortable because we're not just gonna be bad holding this stock. Now, if it's something that you like long-term, completely different scenario, maybe your dollar cost averaging in, totally cool, no qualms with that. The main thing I'm highlighting here is people say they're comfortable until shit starts to hit the fan and then all of a sudden they're not comfortable and the plane goes out the window. You gotta think it all the way through. Let's move on to the next one here, which is premium hunting. I have two examples here, and this is, I know I did this myself early on. I wanted to sell cash secured puts where I could make the most money, the highest return on invested capital, but I didn't totally understand what that meant. And I wanna make sure that you understand what that means. If you do, before I say it, throw it in the comments below, quick little quiz, see if you understand why it's not as simple as I want to get paid the most, the highest return on invested capital. The reason why it's not is let's look at two examples. I have PG on this side, Tesla on this side. PG on a 31 days to expiration, 30 delta put, the return on invested capital is 1.3%. So all I do, pop up PG here, go over here, 31 days to expiration, we come over here to this 30 put, it's, I'm just using the mid price, which is $1.90. So on a one lot, 100 shares, you'll collect $190 and you'll put up $14,600. That is how you are getting this return on invested capital. That's actually really good. And I wanna make a quick note on that because we're in a bear market and volatility is abundant. This is actually still a really good trade. During the, during the bull market that we went through, when I was trading things like the coverage strangle, I was hunting for 1% return on the money. So this is actually still really good it's going to skew a lot of people's perceptions that trade these that are just starting now, but it's worth noting. So anyways, 1.3% return on invested capital. The high low variance for the past one year is 26%. So if I come in here and we look at the high and we look at the low, the variance between the widest part of this one year daily range is again, that percentage, which is 26%. And if we take a look at what the daily weekly moves are, the daily move, one standard deviation moves about $2, weekly is about $4.60, monthly about $9.50. Okay, got it. So this is, again, I wanna make this really clear because this is gonna screw a lot of people up when we're not in a bear market and volatility is gone and you can't even get this. You're hopeful to get 0.8% return on invested capital. So take advantage of this while you got it. But then let's look at something like Tesla. So Tesla right now is actually offering 5.5% return on invested capital. So again, using the same example, if we go 31 days out, I think this one, yeah, right here, 30 delta, this is the mid price is 695. So it's the same exact story. We're just gonna take the premium received divided by the amount to cash secure the position, and you're gonna get 5.5% return on invested capital. A lot of money for what you're putting up, you're like four times what you're getting over here, which is fantastic. However, Look at the one year high low variance. It's 66%, it's like three times what you're seeing over here. So why is this the case? Why does this matter? Why does premium hunting lead people astray? Because it kind of combines these two factors in one setting. So what I mean by that is we are selling something and we would like to collect a premium obviously. And we're starting that with the assumption of I'm comfortable, but then when we start premium hunting, we're looking for the highest return on invested capital that we can find. What you're going to experience is more return variance. That is why you are getting more return on your money for that ticker, because the raw implied volatility of these products is different. If we look at Tesla, the raw implied volatility here is 81.64%. And then if we look at PG, the raw implied volatility is 22%. 
So these are very different worlds. And that is why you're gonna get more money when you have higher implied volatility. But the trade-off with higher implied volatility is you're gonna be dealing with the trades a lot more, meaning taking assignment, having to roll trades, which may not be the end of the world. But a lot of people get into this just purely looking for the most, the highest return on their capital, which I understand, but there's a trade-off to that. Higher implied volatility means higher variance movement in the underlying itself. You gotta be ready to deal with it. And again, while you're going through that variance that what you were comfortable with to start, you might not be comfortable with as the underlying is now down 60% over a year. So thinking through that ahead of time is absolutely pivotal to making sure that you can actually follow your plan. These are two of the biggest problems with the wheel. People don't think through these things enough ahead of time. They get stuck trying to figure it out on the fly and they struggle, abandon the plan, and then we just have a bunch of losing trades. So don't do that. Be an outlier. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See y'all later.